Hey, TikTok. Um, so, it's kind of weird. I think some kind of master hand of, like, the uh, YouTube algorithm is trying to um, turn me into an extremist. Let me explain. I've been seeing, like, a lot of content about, like, piracy and ethics and stuff. And, yeah, I think it worked. Let me explain. Um, I believe in socialism, right? I believe that people shouldn't need a livelihood to live. We should just, oh, you're a human being with inalienable God-given rights and you deserve to be able to live? Here's money. I'm the government. I protect you. So here's money. Go buy yourself something nice and also a house, food, shelter, clothes, and etc. Right? Yeah. Because if we know we're giving people enough to live, and they're bad with their money, then we can, like, court mandate them to take a class on spending money better, or, like, we know they're mentally ill now because they have enough to live and they're not doing the right choices, and we can, like, proceed as required. Anyways, back to piracy. Um... Another side tangent. In Japan, there's a new law called the Invoice Law, and it's not as innocent as it sounds. It's basically going to bankrupt animators and voice actors, so your anime is going to turn really, really bad and poor quality soon, possibly. Um, okay, additionally, you may have noticed that YouTube and other freemium platforms have been like, ADVERTISEMENT! all the way, and it's kind of, like, too much, right? Right. Right. Additionally, you may have noticed that large tech companies are working on, um, technology to replace artists and writers and, uh, special effects workers, etc., with, like, trippy AI-generated stuff, like what you see behind me. Um, yeah. And, you know, protests and writer strikes slowing the progress down a bit, but we're gonna get there eventually. We are. And that's not as scary as it sounds, because corporate technology always eventually trickles down to the consumer. Money doesn't trickle down, but technology certainly, certainly does. Like, for example, Microsoft Word. There's free open source word processing programs that are just as good as not better, if not better than Microsoft Word, and so on and so forth for all technologies, essentially. Like ChatGPT. There's small versions of ChatGPT that can run locally in your phone now. Um, there's one called the minstrel, or, yeah, minstrel model. If you quantize that baby, get some Llama CPP and pipe it through some Android um, shenanigans, you can get that running on your phone. Or at least on a Raspberry Pi, which is weaker than your phone. So, hypothetically, with the right talent, it could run on your phone. Right? Chat GPT, big giant supercomputer, scary, minstrel, basically chat GPT, but not scary if it's in your phone, what? So, so it's the end of the world. Let me explain. The only thing keeping people sane at the end of the day is entertainment, right? It's getting harder to access, it's getting worse, and something else. The ability to create bespoke entertainment for free on your own devices, it's slowly becoming a reality. Right now it's shit, but it's gonna go from shit to 60 in like, faster than you can blink. And when that happens, it's the end of the world, baby, because those big companies they're either going to have to lock that technology down and, like, turn us into a police state to stop you from using it 
to cancel your Netflix subscription and replace it with all of your own personal fan fictions, or everything is free now. Yeah. And how does this tie into piracy? Well, um, the reason we don't do piracy is because it steals from artists and hardworking, like, individuals who are creative and they deserve, like, love for all the good that they bring us, right? Well, um, here's the thing about that. The artists are getting ripped off, so even if you do pay for the product, they're only getting a very tiny percentage of that. You're better off just donating to the artist and then pirating all of their art. Don't, don't quote me on that, but, I mean, philosophical standpoint, not legal advice. And I did not tell you to do that. Not real advice, just a philosophical point of view. Um... Because, I mean, yeah, people shouldn't need a livelihood to live. That's my new, like, sound bite. They shouldn't. So, e even if you do just accelerate the process of all of the income disappearing, which is gonna happen anyways, like, if they don't turn us into a police state, they will lose their ability to make income. Period. Period. They're gonna lose their ability to make income, because if they invent some kind of supercomputer, like the Kevin Feige AI from the She-Hulk um, Disney Plus joke plot, um, and the Kevin Feige AI can make movies from like a single command or like your fan script or whatever, it's only going to be a couple of years until the Kevin Feige AI can run on your phone, and then, like, anything you can imagine is yours. You don't have to wait for a Hollywood movie to come out. You can just, like, make one and, like, wait a few hours and then watch your own fan script. Like, we're free. And there's nothing they could do to stop you unless they just decided to bust into your house and stop you from using your own software, which... It's entirely possible, but I don't want to live in that future. But that's the only way they'd be able to continue to make income, is if they turned the world into a police state. So you've got two options now. Police state, or everything is free. So, pick. That's all. See ya.